Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time it is near you. Thank you for taking the time to look at this Ignite November 2021 session, where we go over how to get more from your Microsoft Endpoint Management Platform with Kindrel Digital Experience Management, Deep Insights and Automation. I'm Ron Xavier, Modern Workplace Architect with Kindrel, and I'll take you through it. You may not recognize the Kindrel brand yet, but you will recognize our heritage brand, of global technology services under IBM. We've been managing the most complex client infrastructures for decades, and we also have a 30-year history of partnering with Microsoft. Now with Kindrel becoming a separate business, we will bring with us 90,000 great people, more than 3,000 patents, and managed services capabilities recognized by all the major analysts. Our focus has been and will be on designing and running infrastructure that you depend on every single day. We bring with those capabilities with us, along with our partnership with Microsoft, to you, our customers. We are gold partners with Microsoft in many different areas, including application development, cloud platform, cloud productivity, collaboration and content, communications, enterprise resource planning, messaging, windows and devices, enterprise mobility, small mid-market solutions, and more. As I've stated, we've had a 30-year partnership with Microsoft, so we have a deep alliance and relationship. We also provide multiple resource channels for communication with Microsoft and with you to be able to provide you the best solutions possible. We provide technology showcases, proof of concepts, and proof of value to be able to show you all the different capabilities that you can get to be able to run your business on Microsoft technology wrapped with our services, which are best in class. We provide implementation accelerator kits, which are pre-built configurations that we can import into your environment to speed deployment, whether they are configuration, security baselines, uh, applications, you know, dynamic provisioning configurations, and more. Competency development is one of the main things that make us special at what we do. We spend a lot of time developing our people to be able to provide you the best the best people at the right time in the in the right place. We have over 1,100 Azure, Azure certified professionals, 4,700 experts globally, 40 delivery centers, 55 languages, and 24/7 operations. We have unmatched global scale. We develop solutions and market solutions for all sorts of needs. We can we have solutions that are industry based for the financial industries, for manufacturing, uh, for small businesses. And we have many other different solutions that are generic that can be tailored to different size customers and different needs. Now let's discuss how you can get more from your Microsoft device management investments. With Microsoft Endpoint Management, you get a ton of features, risk-based control, zero-touch provisioning, which provides you dynamic provisioning using autopilot and provides zero-touch provisioning for mobile devices, intelligence security with Windows Defender, advanced analytics, with desktop analytics, endpoint analytics, productivity score, and more. And you get a unified management platform, whether you're using Config Manager, Intune, or a hybrid approach. And that's great for managing the devices themselves. But we also want to be able to manage the end user experience and improve the device management experience. And that's where Kindrel comes in to wrap our services around Microsoft device management. We provide integration, not only with the tooling, but with other tools provide a holistic view and inter a holistic view and integration with uh, a data pond and an analytics platform and that gives us a data driven approach we can take all the data from the device management platform from ticket information from end user behaviors and turn that into automation and that automation will improve the end user experience and drive business outcomes and we use all of this to be able to create a continuous improvement framework we're constantly taking these data points and we're implementing more and more automation and we're improving the end user experience in a continuous process. We'll first talk about the integration for a seamless user journey. The end user is at the center of it all. The end user looks to contact an agent. We provide agent intelligence. So that agent 
knows the end user. You're not just any end user. When you call in and you identify yourself, we know when you've called in last, what you've called in about. We can look up the health of your device. All this information is provided to us along with common fixes and fixes that your device may need before you even tell us exactly what's wrong. And this is part of the agent assist capabilities, which surfaces all this information for the agent to use, for them to be able to have this at their fingertips while they're speaking to you. A lot of this is also provided through the virtual personal assistant. So you can be able to find self-help and self-service capabilities through the virtual personal assistant without needing to call the service desk. There's also voice service, self-service. So when you're calling the service desk and you identify yourself, you can also self-service fixes, whether it's a password reset or other fixlets that can be identified with voice commands. And we have workflow automation that can be directed through our mobile apps. So whether you're looking to look up something to configure on your device, whether you want to fix your VPN, you want to look at configuring a new application, or you want to deliver a fix to your, your laptop, your mobile device can be used to trigger that process. How we do all of this is based on our data sources and the integration of our data sources in with our data pond. We start with analyze and automate. Everything flows around these two. So we want to be able to analyze all the data sources, the end user, and we want to be able to drive automation based on that data. So we start with integrating user behaviors, understanding the different user behaviors for different types of users, the user personas. And then we look at the app performance the app performance based on those personas because the apps are going to be used differently depending on your job function. We also integrate with the support channels. If you're looking for support through self-help, through self-service, through contacting our support desk, or even if you've submitted tickets yourself, and we grab the semantic ticket data. So when tickets are created, we're looking at that data as well, integrating that into our, into our data, into our overall data pond. Then we're also analyzing your devices, whether it's your mobile device, your desktop device and looking at device health. How healthy is that device? Application failures, blue screens, crashes, and the infrastructure that that, that that device is using. We're looking at your LAN and WAN as you're accessing it, whether you're on your home network, we can see if something's functioning better at home versus functioning in the office. We take all of this and we drive it towards automation, whether it's, and the self-heal automation is both self-service and it's proactive. So you get the proactive experiences where we can create triggers to identify an issue and resolve it before you even need to call for support, or you can trigger self-service if you need to deliver a fix, whether it's reset your Outlook profile, it is to configure an app, reconfigure an application that's causing trouble. And this also is surfaced through our virtual personal assistant and voice self-service. We take this as well and create robotic automation processes. One of the most common is join or move or lever, to be able to have that, instead of going through different systems, to be able to initiate that, you can use that through robotic process automation and through workflow automation. And then after we automate, we're using that automation to eliminate systemic issues, issues where you're constantly repairing a problem, whether your VPN client is constantly losing its configuration, an application is constantly failing install. We want to be able to use the self-heal capabilities and use the automation to address that, but also dig deeper to eliminate the systemic issues. So we're not constantly just fixing, we're actually getting to the root of the problem. Some of this automation and the insights that we gain can also provide new innovation, be able to create new workflows, new processes, update governance, and also change processes, whether they're directly on the machine, whether it's how we deploy a device, the amount of apps that we deploy on that device to make that device productive, apps that we have stream in later because the user doesn't need it right away to be able to provide the ideal end user experience. And this also drives our continuous improvement and it provides data for us to be able to put into our data pond to use across clients to be able to address needs of clients and see the needs of clients before they come and ask us. We can predictive, predictively identify those needs and address them. There's different types of automation um, with your workflow automation, your robotic process automation, but I wanna talk about the self-heal automation. It starts with data insights. We grab data insights from across the Kindrel platform, which can include collaboration, it can, it can include a virtual environment, includes ticket data, business systems, and other self-heal capabilities. Then we look at business prioritization. What's the return on investment for creating this self-heal? 
Are there in-flight projects that are causing the problem that are going to be resolved soon? Are there in-flight projects that are resolving a problem that we're going to create uh, a self-heal script for or self-heal capabilities for? You look at the device lifecycle. Is this a device-based problem that is going to be addressed because a device is failing and we would push that refresh of the device forward to address the issue versus spending time creating a self-heal process to address that? Then we look at monitoring the creation. What are the triggers? What are we recognizing to be able to trigger this process? Is it a reliable? Is it something that is repeatable, that we constantly see these conditions and these conditions are reliable enough, reliable enough for us to use as a trigger? We also look at a cooling period. We don't want to run the process over and over and over again. Um, we want to be able to have a period of time where if this is being run proactively, there's a period of time where it's not run to allow the device to, to see if this actually comes up again. And this would also be true for if it's self-serve. We don't want this, we don't want a user to be able to run a self-service script over and over and over again. It may cause more damage than good. Another key aspect of this is configuration management versus the digital experience management to correct the issue. Not everything requires self-heal automation. This may direct you to changing a configuration within the platform. For example, if it's a Windows 10 device that's running out of hard drive space, we may want to look at configuring storage sense or tweaking the configura configuration of storage sense if it's already configured to be able to address a storage issue. Or we may want to look at how an application is packaged if it's constantly failing or if the configuration of that, that application, which is maybe a second step to the install of it, is failing. But then there are other scenarios where we may use the self-heal automation because it's something that can't be addressed through configuration management the configuration management platform or the OS that we are configuring. Then we look at building. We want to be able to use coding standards. We don't want spaghetti code. We don't want something that people can't read. We want to have well-structured code. We also do security reviews to make sure that there's no vulnerabilities. We want to make that code reusable. We want to make it functional, parameterized, so we can take it, take chunks of it and reuse it to be able to create other scripts. And this speeds the deployment of new scripts as we go forward. We want to be able to measure this. The last part is measuring it because, of course, measuring it is very important to determine identifying success. We must, define, we must first define a baseline. Then we must identify success criteria based on that baseline. And in specific situations, look at strategic resolutions. Again, if we're constantly repairing an issue for months at a time, then we have a systemic issue. We must be able to address that system, systemic issue by bringing in other teams, whether it's your platform management team, whether it's um, identity and access management, security. We bring in those teams and we work with us to be able to find the strategic resolution. And then we look to retire that self heal script. And this is a constant process that is used over and over again. And the last part about, of this to be able to improve that end user experience is journey mapping. And this leads into experience level agreements. So we start with digital experience management, which is our platform to be able to get the insights, to be able to perform analysis of devices and the end user. We determine strategic focus areas based on the multiple data sources. We talked about ticketing data, um, business systems, et cetera, and identifying high value transformation initiatives and automation opportunities. We marry that with operational metrics, which you would mostly refer to as SLAs. And these SLAs could be when you're calling into the service desk, they could be how fast applications, um, applications are delivered to devices. This could be patching timelines. We marry these together to create five user journey categories. And these user journey categories accurately track the end user experience. So we look at the user effort when they're calling a service desk. We look at the agent experiences, how the agent, how, how quickly can the agent resolve an issue, uh, zero level deflection to be able to resolve that issue when the user calls in. We look at automation experiences, the percent of tickets resolved through reactive automation, the percent of tickets resolved with proactive automation. We look at self-service experience when a user is self-serving them a fix, whether that is a script to fix a problem, whether that is self-help content, and we look at the device experience, the user productivity impact based on the changes that we're making, based on digital experience management, based on configuration changes, based on the device management platform. Now let's look at just the first use case being a large healthcare services organization and a self-heal dashboard. 
So we've looked at this and we found approximately estimating 2,000 hours a week over the past two months could have been saved by implementing some of these self-heal capabilities. There is over a thousand devices that have less than 5% of hard drive space. This is a Windows 7 environment. Then we would need to use our digital experience management self-heal capabilities to be able to resolve that. But we worked with, in this specific scenario, we worked with a distribution team to remove superseded updates and remediate failures. Again, in a Windows 10 environment, we could look at storage sense and configuring storage sense to be able to make sure that there is enough free space for that device to function optimally. We also look at critical hardware hard, critical hardware errors. And in this case, we had 1,400 1, users facing hard drive failures and data loss. So we prompted to raise tickets for them to be able to back up their data and replace faulty drives before they have an issue. The biggest scenario here was the 20,000 system crashes with blue screens of death. And that we aggregated that to approximately 205 days of lost time over the past actual accumulated 90 days. And this was due to patches being delivered in an incorrect order. And we found that through our digital, through the sensors that we deployed on the device and with our analytics assessment architect, viewing that information with our processes to determine that this was the problem. We engaged a level three teams to be able to correct the issue going forward. Another big hitter here was software license reclamation, which isn't directly isn't directly leading to uh, changes to the device management platform or improvements in the platform, but it's a business outcome. We were able to save $2.2 million in licensing. And how we reclaim those licenses or knew those licenses could be reclaimed is the way we track application usage. It's not, is the application installed? You know, was it used in the last 30 days? It's more, was the application launched and actually active? Were they using this application actively and for how long? to determine a real use case for the application for the license. You don't want to be paying thousands of dollars per license for something that is being used every so often for 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't make sense. And lastly, we had some vulnerable applications in the environment, which we were able to identify and those applications need to be updated. So that's now taking vulnerable applications, which weren't patched, going back to the device management platform and pushing out updates to those through uh, workflows or through automated packaging and then distribution of that, or even identifying to the user through notifications to go to the app store and upgrade their device. The last use case we'll look at was, is a global leader in the semiconductor industry. What makes this impressive, this is only seven days of analysis. In seven days of analysis, we looked at six, we found 6,324 hours of lost time due to an extreme crash rate of devices. And this was calculated at about $316,000 lost per week. We found self-heal capabilities reduced 55 tickets weekly. We found over 3,000 unauthorized applications and we found Teams latency. And the Teams latency was very interesting because that wasn't just directly on the device. That showed the end-to-end -end capabilities of our digital experience management platform to look at Teams and how it's running on-prem and the network and how it's configured to be able to get to the Teams endpoint. And then when a user is remote and the improvement when a user is remote. And we were able to identify that it was a network misconfiguration, contact the network team and address the issue with the endpoint that Teams was trying to access. And part of this as well is we could look at how Teams is working across other clients. With our data pond, we collect some of this information and we could say, you know, is this normal that Teams does have latency in Europe or in this country or with this type of device to be able to determine whether it's something that is you know, expected or it's out of the ordinary? Again, this is only within seven days. So within seven, imagine what we could do within months of, with months of data and more time for analysis. That was a brief but quick overview of how you can get more out of Microsoft's endpoint management platform with Kindrel's digital experience management, deep insights, and automation. Thank you very much for viewing this session. Please contact me. My email address is here, and we at Kindrel would love to work with you to be able to improve your, your endpoint management experience. Thank you.